Hey guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fangirls, and this video will probably be a long one. So go ahead, sit back, relax, grab a snack, because I'm going to be talking about TV shows. Now, I watched 28 TV shows this year, and every single one of them I either liked or hated. So I'm going to be ranking my TV shows of 2019 from worst to best, best and telling why I did or did not like it like it. Now, just because I did not like a TV show this year does not mean I necessarily hate this TV show. I will get into why I didn't like it this year personally, but I'm excited for this list. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. So coming in at number 28 is 13 Reasons Why Season 3. Now, 13 Reasons Why is a very divisive show, but season three took the cake for my most hated season of a TV show ever. There is nothing worse than taking a rapist, I sh like, let's just say who he is, call him for what he is, and trying to get us to symp sympathize with him, him and feel sorry for him because, you know, they have lives too. Like I said in my 13 Reasons Why Season 3 review, uh, I have videos for those if you guys are interested in them. It was probably one of my favorite videos to make, make and most frustrating because the editing was just like hell. I was in editing hell for weeks for this one, so of course I didn't like it because of that. That, but uh... <laughs> Uh, I also hated it because, you know, there's nothing worse than making people feel sympathy for people who shouldn't be sympathized with, and Bryce Walker is one of those very many people, people that you should not feel sorry for. He's calculating, he's cold, he doesn't feel sorry for shit that he's ever done, done, and that's probably why this isn't a huge spoiler, but, uh... <laughs> Uh, wait until I'm done with my tea glass. But this is probably why he got murdered in season three. Because he's an asshole and he deserved what he got. What he got. But, you know, that is my opinion. Opinion. But, uh, I don't know. I just, like, I hated 13 Reasons Why season three. I also hated Ani, the new character they introduced. At first, I'm like, oh, what is she doing here? Is she gonna be an interesting character? And she, without a doubt, became one of my most hated, if not my most hated character of 2019, because I hated the fucking shit out of this girl. That's girl. I uh, hate anyone who tries to defend a rapist, and she was very, one of the very few people I've encountered in a t in entertainment today that actually went above and beyond for one. And I'm just like, no, no, you are definitely a horrible person if you even come close to putting up with assholes like this. But. <laughs> You know, that was just her, but that's why it, uh, got so low of a ranking for me. That's why it's probably one of my most hated. And for this, not to mention, like, the message of that. Like, I feel like, like, this season was very harmful to rape victims out there, too. I'm just gonna say it. Say it. Uh, <laughs> It's just like, it was a very shitty thing, shitty of the writers at 13 Reasons Why I do, to do to, uh, you know, put that POV in there because that is so, so unsympathetic and so awful to even put people through who have been through sexual assault through this. And, you know, we do not feel sympathy for rapists. That's just not something we do. And this is why it's probably one of the worst seasons of TV shows in history. history. So coming in at number 27 is Into the Dark. I've only seen two out of the 12 of this miniseries and they're just so bad that I just couldn't continue with this series. I know a lot of people love this anthology series. I'm just personally not one with this anthology series and I thought it was pretty bad and low quality so I will not be continuing this series. So, coming in at number tw 26 is actually Black Mirror. I know 
I'm so surprised and shocked about this too. Black Mirror is without a doubt one of my favorite shows of all time, but season 5 was just so much of a letdown. I only personally liked one episode of the season, and that was the one with Miley Cyrus in it. And I even told my co-worker, you know it's sad whenever the episode of Miley Cyrus is the best episode out of all of them. Now I'm not shitting on Miley, I actually really like Miley Cyrus as a person. But I thought her episode wasn't going to be all that great to begin with. And hers was actually my favorite out of the whole season. Not to mention, we waited a year and a half for this season. And I would have expected it to be better, which it wasn't. And let's I'm just going to put it out there. The, ep the first episode in this one is trash. I didn't like it. Like it. Not because it has LGBTQ plus representation in it, if you could even call it that, honestly. Honestly, it was just weird, and I didn't get the point of it. it. Usually Black Mirror episodes have a very deeper message in it, and this one had no message. And, you know, the second one, I liked the second episode well enough, but it's definitely up there with my worst TV shows because I know what Black Mirror can do. And after Bandersnatch and this, I just have to put Black Mirror further down on this list. And hopefully, fingers crossed, in 2020, they'll make a comeback and make great content for us because this is just not it. So coming in at number 25, I'm sad to put it here because apparently it's been getting a very high audience score. And it, maybe I just... Did not get the hype with this one, even though it contains one of my favorite actors ever in Summer Older, and that is V Wars. I haven't posted a lot about V Wars on this. I think I made it to episode 5 in my editing. editing, and I'll definitely post the rest whenever I get around to it. But this one, I like, I could enjoy the premise. I like the new innovative way that they dealt with vampires in this one. I expected this to be a fresh new take on the vampire genre. And this was more science-y than anything. Anything. Not saying that science is a bad thing. And like Ian Summerholder said, maybe the people who are just not a fans just don't get it. And that's perfectly okay with me. Me, I personally just watched this because of Ian Summerholder. I respect Ian Summerholder as an actor and as a person. Person, I might. I might watch season two when it comes out. Just because I'm trash for Vampire Diaries and anyone who's in it. But, uh, <laughs> this one just didn't gel well for me. So coming in at number 24 is Riverdale. Yes, I know I do reactions to Riverdale all the time. The time I just think it's getting a little too crazy and a little too out there for my personal taste. Taste not saying I hate this show. Show just saying it's just not for me. So coming in at number twenty three is tying up with Marie Kondo. I enjoyed this while I was watching this, but it's not very memorable for me. So I gotta put it on twenty three. So coming in at number twenty two is actually awkward. I finally finished all of Awkward the series from start to finish. Finish. And as a whole, it's an okay series. I don't really like the fact that, uh, spoiler alert, I didn't really like the fact that Jenna ended up with Maddie at the end. And I personally would have rather Jenna end up with no one because I feel like Maddie, even though sometimes he's not a trash person, can be a trash person. And I just didn't gel well with that. That, And I know it's a controversial opinion, but it's mine. mine. But like I said, I don't really gel well with like the main love interest in this series series and that is Maddie Kibben. I sometimes think he pulls very asshole moves. Moves. So his asshole moves just put the series further down than what it should have been. Then the whole Dark Jenna thing, while entertaining, really got on my nerves at some points. So unfortunately that's why this one was like a little bit down there. So coming in at number 21 is Glow Up. Uh... I watched Glow Up in 2019. I did not like who actually ended up, well, he was okay. I'll say that he was okay. 
Okay, but uh, one of my favorite contestants deserved better, and she got voted out because of a technicality, and that's what really pissed me off. Off, she should have been in the final two. It shouldn't have been like X person over here. So that's all I gotta say, and. You know, that shit happens. So coming in at number 20 is actually a series I have not finished yet. I've got two episodes left of it, but I still watched enough for it to count. And that's High School Musical, the musical. Musical. Now, why this is, like, somewhat further down on my list is because I don't like the two main love interests, which is uh, Ricky and Nini, I believe. I believe, I know, I know, controversial opinion opinion. I just, I really don't really like the trope of the guy does not know what he had until he loses it. Not to mention, he's trying to interfere in her new relationship, which I totally am not for. For I know a lot of people don't like e Elijah as a person. EJ? No, I think his name's EJ. EJ. I know he do they don't like him as a person, and I get that. That, but, uh, I, I think Nini deserves better, honestly, and that's just me. Me, I know he's going through shit, I know he did go through shit, but that's no reason to be a shitty person. Person, just saying. So coming in, number 19 is a politician. Now this does a lot of politics, and while I can enjoy politics to a certain extent, instead in this movie, not movie, show was, uh, like, very fun for me. Me, it didn't really hit the mark like I thought. So coming in at number 18 is sex education. The reason why I put this so far below is because I really can't remember a lot about sex education. Education, I know I watched the whole season. I can't wait for season two. I know I'm definitely going to be watching that when that comes out. Comes out, so yeah. So coming in at number 17 is The Act. Act. Uh, I have to put it in the middle here because I did like it at first and then I was all like, eh, eh. Yeah, I know this is based off a true story so they can only get so much rights to the story itself. I'm just like a little bit, you know, in the middle about it. It wasn't bad. Uh, it was great. There were some great parts. It was just okay. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. So coming in at number 16 is Pen15. 15. Now this show took me back to how awkward it was to be a 15 year old and it was super funny Funny, but it was not my favorite. So coming speaking of 15 coming in at number 15 is the originals now I'm a huge huge fan of the vampire diaries. So when I finished the vampire diaries, I'm all like oh, I haven't watched the originals Originals in a while so I picked up the originals I picked it up from season two, so I watched season two through five. Very sad ending. Wasn't a very satisfying conclusion, if I say so myself. Season three is definitely my favorite of the originals, if I had to pick a season. Seasons one through three were solid, but seasons four through five, like most Julia Plex shows, were a little bit lacking in storyline and purpose. So, you know, hopefully Legacies does better. There. So coming in at number 14 is Stranger Things. I know, Stranger Things at number 14. Before you uh, write down on the little, write down on the keyboard or type away on the keyboard, I've only seen season one of Stranger Things. I've not seen season two or three, three yet. I enjoyed season one, but Stranger Things is not my favorite show. It takes me a while to get into science fiction. Fiction, so I'm definitely putting this at number 14 because of it. So coming in at number 13 is Big Little Lies. We're getting to how hard my list was to make. Make because I love a lot of these shows. But Big Little Lies, I think it's a very good mystery TV show about who killed this person and how it ended up this way. And I was very sad to see the character who Alexander Skarsgård actually ended up playing because I love Alexander Skarsgård. I love the whole Skarsgård family, honestly. <coughs> honestly, but... I was super excited to watch this, and everybody's acting in here was superb. I loved it so much. 
much. And I thank my dad for the recommendation because I didn't think I would like it, but I ended up doing it anyway. So coming in at number 12 is Big Mouth. Like I said, said uh, revisiting my adolescence is actually always super fun. <coughs> the show is actually very funny. Funny. And Connie is my queen. I love her so much. So coming in at number 11 is American Horror Story. And before anyone says anything, I've only watched season 1 and 2 of American Horror Story. Asylum definitely beat out Murder House. Murder House took me a while to get through, not gonna lie. But I was there was a while there where American Horror Story was one of the only shows I would watch for a while. A while, and I can't wait to watch the rest of it. I heard it gets worse, though, so maybe not. So coming in to my final ten. <coughs> I'm so super excited about this. This So coming in at number ten. These were hard shows, but number ten was Atypical. Now, Atypical is one of my favorite series of all time. Season three it just got me straight in the feels and in the warm fuzzies. Fuzzies, I really liked a lot about season three. There was some parts of it that were boring, some parts that made me automatically want to roll my eyes. I was like the love stories in this one, not gonna lie. I think the only love story I really like in this one, one is Paige and Sam. I do feel something for Maya, Maya and Casey and Evan. Evan too, it's just like my favorite one out of all of them are Paige and Sam because they're just so super adorable. So coming in at number nine is actually Alexa and Katie. Now before people say anything, I recently watched the ending of season three. So this is a season two ranking of Alexa and Katie. Season two was very good. I enjoyed it a lot. It got me straight in the feels whenever... It dealt with breakups during that season. If people know the show, they know what breakup I'm referring to. That scene caught me. I'm not very uh, much of a crier, but I cried during that scene because I'm all like, I felt like a mom at that point. I was like, oh honey, don't cry. He's just a boy. A boy. Sadly, you'll go through so many heartbreaks in your life. Life, but that one got me. And I'm not even ashamed about it. So coming in at number 8 is Fuller House. I'm just going to say I was so super happy with the ending of Fuller House this season. Season that I put it so far up there. Fans of the show and who have seen it know what I'm talking about. That scene was just so great. Great and it put it up for me so so high. So coming in at number 7 is actually the conclusion of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Girlfriend, I'm so, so happy that the show creator decided that it was finally time to close off Crazy Ex-Girlfriend where it was at the prime of its, of its succession. I do like the messages of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I do like how it incorporates mental health messages into it, into it while being a refreshing take on them. On them, and I adore Rebecca Bunch. Do I like, like, how it ended? No, not really. But I can respect the ending, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I've really loved, loved, loved Crazy Ex-Girlfriend while it's been on. And I was so, so sad that it was ending. But it was a very good series while it lasted. So I'm putting it up there. So coming in at number six might actually shock people. But I really, really loved the second season of Insatiable. Well, I know. Like, one of the worst shows that I had last year actually turned out to be a very good show this year. Here, I like how it dived more into Patty's mental health disorder as well as eating disorders. Disorders. I just think that the f you should totally disregard the first season. Yeah, you need to know a lot about the first season. I would just watch a recap and totally watch the second season because I feel like the second season just really hit the mark. Mark, I know a lot of people will feel differently, but I loved the second season of this show and I can't wait for season three. Let's bring it on. So I'm just going to put it out here. My top five was so hard. Hard. I just want to put it out there that I love these shows equally. I love them all so much, but there had to be a winner with this one. 
So coming in at number five is actually Legacies. Like I said, I'm trash for the VP. BD. Well, man. Like, for the TVD universe, sorry, I'm like, Trash for the TVD universe and Legacies is like the third installment of it, and it follows their kids, and I just love everyone in this show. I'm halfway through season two right now, it's airing right now, so I can't really be finished with season two, but I real I watched this one on a hope that it was really gonna be good and there's a lot of scenes that are really good in this show I love the acting I love the relationship between the three actresses who play Hope Josie and Lizzie Lizzie I feel like their friendships are so so strong and I love the message of strong friendships in this one Overall, at its core Julie Pleck has stated that the Vampire Diaries is about love the originals is about family, and Legacies is about friendship. Friendship, and that message shines so much through with this series. And it's very good to have a series that puts the love interest on the back burner and focuses more on friendship centric messages rather than who's gonna screw this boy. I actually really enjoy those messages messages, and uh, I really like Legacies, even though some people are like, ugh, Legacies, can we stop the Vampire Diaries universe, please? Please. But I loved it. So coming in, number four is You. Not You as a person, but You, the TV show. I watched season one and two this year, and I was very impressed with this show. So what I, like I said, what I really like about this show is the message that you could actually know this person. There's nothing more horror-inducing than knowing that Joe Goldberg is actually a real person in real life. Life? I know, Joe Goldberg is a fictional character, but he's based on a lot of people and what they do on social media, and he could actually be a real person in real life. He could be someone you know, and that's horror-inducing. <laughs> Inducing. And I really like how the actor in this one goes, hey, uh, maybe not like Joe because he's actually a psychopath and if you ever, ever encounter a guy like this, please run for your life. I really like Penn Badgley's take on this one. I really like the twist of season two, even though season two started off horribly. I ended up thoroughly enjoying it. It's not as great as season one. One, but it does stand up on its own and is definitely better than the books, let me tell you. So if you didn't enjoy Joy You by Carolyn Kepnes, I totally urge you to actually watch the series because it's ten times better. And I just love all these characters, even though I shouldn't love all these characters because they're all horrible people in their own ways. But sometimes having characters who are horrible isn't necessarily a bad thing. So coming in at number three is actually a surprise for me because I actually ended up watching this series in January, I think. I think it was just like a very cold day and I needed something to actually watch. So I started off with Outlander and uh, I've made it all the way to season three, so no season four or five, so boilers please. But I really loved Outlander. I love the relationship between Jamie and Claire. They're just my most favorite relationship of all time. They're so strong. It's I'm just going to put it out there. The relationship between Jamie and Claire is what makes Outlander Outlander. I just thoroughly enjoy their relationship dynamic and I enjoy the politics that are happening throughout this series and I enjoy, you know, the time travel aspect. I just enjoy a lot about this series. Now season three, I'm gonna state it wasn't its best, so that's why it's actually on number three because it probably would have been number one, honestly, if it hadn't been for season three being kind of boring and not interesting. I just really hope that season four brings me back to my love of Outlander because I really need it. Need it, but, uh, Jamie and Claire forever. <laughs> Ever. So coming in number two. Let's just say I went back and forth between these last two because they're so, so good. And both of them 
and we're actually we're actually like very important to me in different ways. So coming in at number two is The Witcher. Now, like I said, it's kind of like Jamie and Claire, Claire, but I love the relationship between Geralt and Yennefer. I love it so so much that it made Witcher like one of my favorite shows of all time. All time. I just love Geralt as a person too, honestly. This was one of the shows that I wasn't sure about. Like I said, it's you should never uh, discard a show, movie or TV show just because you think you wouldn't like it. Because I watched The Witcher because I thought, hey, it would be something to react to. React to, and I don't know, it has a very popular fan base with the books and the video games. So why not watch it? And I was not disappointed in this. This is probably one of the best series that Netflix has ever done. Honestly, and I loved it so, so much. I love the cast in this one. The ensemble is awesome. The storylines are awesome. Awesome. The relationship between Jess Yesker and uh, Geralt is awesome, as well as Yennefer and Geralt, and I just love how the cast plays off of each other. Each other, and it's just, like, such a good show. Like, this show is so good, I watched it twice twice in the same month. Usually, I wait a while to rewatch a series, but <laughs> The Witcher was definitely one that I watched over and over, and I'm actually thinking about going for a third rewatch because it's just that good. <clears throat> good, guys. But, uh, I have to, uh, but unfortunately, it did not make my number one cut. So my number one cut, if a lot of people do not know because I never actually mentioned this show on my channel, I've mentioned it in passing that I've watched it before, before, but a lot of people will be shocked that actually my favorite show of 2019 was Euphora. Now Euphora, uh, I actually had acquired an HBO subscription. Go subscription. So I clicked on you for it thinking, hey, this had Zendaya in it. I enjoy Zendaya as a person. I don't mind her acting. Acting in my god, was this just like one of the best shows I've ever watched. Watched. Now, this show is not for everyone. Actually, my dad does not like this show. He doesn't care for this show. But me being who I am, like liking controversial shows because that's just who I am. As a person, I love watching controversial things and trying to figure out why people hate them so much. <laughs> much. I think this show is beca controversial because it has to be controversial. It follows the life of a drug addict. Act, so it's not an easy show to get through. And my god, is this like one of the most realistic realistic portrayals of teenagers today? today, or in society, or ever, ever, like, this one makes me scared to have a teenager, because, damn, damn, this show is so fear-inducing, inducing, but I just love it, I love the cast, I love the ensemble, I'm not very partial to the couples in this show, we'll get into that when I discuss my favorite and least favorite couples of 2019, but the show gives me the warm fuzzies every time I think about it. I love watching reactions to the show. I don't really want to rewatch this show, this show, because it's just so hard to get through. It deals with a lot of hard topics that a lot of people probably wouldn't find easy to watch, so... Just a trigger warning on that. On that, if you do struggle with drug abuse or sexual assault or domestic abuse, I wouldn't watch this show. It goes into very graphic detail about this. Things like this. So I wouldn't, you know, you know, watch it if uh, those are things that trigger you. But this is a super important show today, and I loved every single minute of it. But there you guys have it. That was my least favorite and favorite shows of 2019. What is your favorite show of 2019? Comment down below and let me know, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!